to show the mask you have got on the pitch, started doing kick outs, started doing shoulders, started catching on the back of my head, flicking up, catching it on my feet, doing all, all my tricks. And um, one thing with, with Ghana, the warm up is so dope. I've never warmed up like everyone's in sync. There's two people, there's two lines, and everyone's just doing the same thing in sync. Everything was just so, so unbelievable. So, warm up is done now, heading back to the changing room. I'm more, I'm more excited, I'm more. Adrenaline is pumping, the heart is beating. I just I just can't believe what I just came out to working like when I was a, a little child, imagining what it was like to be in the stadium. And the first time I come to the stadium is me playing a game for my childhood team. I just couldn't believe it. Anyway, I went back to the change room. I took the number seven shirt. I think I was number seven, they gave me the number seven shirt. At that time I had my R9 boots, the black and white Ronaldo boot with a shiny bit at, um, at the front. I put them on, I was ready for action. Referee blows the whistle. We go out now, I take a deep breath, and I'm like, come on, Derek, come on, Derek. It's show time. It's now or never. All your hard work, everything you've been doing, all the sacrifices you, you've made, all the time when people said you wasn't good enough, this, this is your stage. Go out there and show, show the whole world, show the whole of Ghana what you're about and who you are get out there and absolutely smash it. So I pumped myself up so much, like I just couldn't wait for the referee to, to blow the whistle for the game to start. Um, the game started, just 10 minutes went by like a, like a flush. It was, it was like, it was so far. I don't think I even got um, um, a touch of the ball. Then slowly and surely I started getting involved with the game. I started getting the ball. Um, I kept it nice and simple at first. I kept it nice and simple. I kept the ball moving, getting past. Then I grew confident. I, I said, you know what, I'm ready. I tried to take home the left back, knocked it past him. And man, he came in with the most, I can remember my ankles were on fire. He came in with the dirtiest two-footed challenge. Took me out. I was rolling on the floor in agony. I was like, oh my God, oh my God. I was in so much pain. I was in so much pain. I just, I just, couldn't, I just couldn't believe it. Do you know what I mean? So at the same time, I was on the floor when I was getting treatment, I was thinking, do you know what? That's what you get for being um, too cocky. But at the same time, I said, don't let that deter you. This is what your game is about. Your game is about getting it, taking on players. Don't be afraid of li little knocks. Earn their respect and get back up, get back on the pitch. Don't be afraid to take on anyone. Get back on the pitch and show this crowd what they came to see. So after that injury, I got back up. I was just tearing the defenders apart, just getting on the wing crosses in the second half the second half the ball came to me on on the edge of the area i must have controlled it i don't remember how i controlled it I remember fainting to go one side and touch the ball the other side the defender moved away a bit and i saw the top corner and i just wrapped my foot around the ball with so much power so much venom wrapped my foot around the ball and the ball just flew and then boom straight into the top corner the whole stadium went <laughs> You know, I mean, the whole thing was crazy and I was just like, I just couldn't believe it. I know it's just a friendly, but still, I just couldn't believe that 50,000 people, I just done that in front of 50,000 people. I just put one in the top corner. I was so like, I don't know what emotion was going through me. I don't know what I was, what I was doing. I was just drunk. People, all the people were just coming around me. I absolutely smashed it. I was unplayable, I was untouchable. Then I knew, yeah, yes, I've arrived. This, this, is where, this is where I want to be. And from here, I'm going to make the step up back to back to England. So after the game, which came up to me and said, there are thousand, thousand unbelievable performance, well done. A contract or anything yet. So I'm there thinking, like, what's going on? Am I going to be offered a contract or what? So I had a meeting with the coach and the coach said to me that, listen, we absolutely love you. We want to sign you. We want you to, we want you to play for us. Um, the team's heading over, over to Germany or training camp. We would love you to come um, come along with us. And after that, we sort our contracts and um, to make it official. Now it was time to head over to Germany, to Hamburg for our pre-season tour. And I hadn't been in Ghana for for that long, and straight away I was getting going back into Europe. So you know, we got over to Germany. I'm like, wow, this place just feels like London. I was like, I'm back, I'm back in London. This place looks just like England. It's just as cold and it's just as rain. And we stayed in this beautiful hotel. It was so nice. I, was, I remember I haven't seen anything like this. So everything I'm seeing is all brand new to me. It was so nice. It was hosted by Hamburg Football Club. And so we got to use all their facilities, use their training ground and stuff. So remember, I've gone from barking to training at um, Hamburg's training ground. The Hamburg team is training on one side, which on on the other. We eating in the same, we using the same gym. The training ground was so amazing. I've never seen grass so flat. I've never seen anything like that. It was just impeccable. It was just 
unbelievable. During that training tour, it was for 10 or 12 days, and we had arranged two friendly games, one against St. Pauli, um, at the time they were in the Bundesliga and the other game was against Hamburg Football Club they were in the Bundesliga as well so I'm reading that itinerary and I'm like what the hell I've gone from marking to playing against two Bundesliga club this is this is beyond what I could have imagined where I was like six months ago so training session everything went well the first match played against St. Pauli again I started the game and I was so shocked that there were so many um, Kotoko fans that came out, there must have been like five, six hundred because it was in Hamburg and Hamburg, I think there's a lot of Ghanaian population and they all came out and it felt like it was playing in Ghana again, it also had the drums, they had everything going and the match started, Mario came out, the one thing I could remember is how massive German players are, I was like what the hell was going on, put it this way, the biggest defender we had was probably the smallest um, player for the German side, they were absolute unit, I'm like how the hell do you even run? It's not even physically possible for you guys to even run or to you guys to be even athletic. Why are you guys so big? They were all like six foot six, six foot whatever. They were all absolutely huge and they were all athletes. Well, we had some really, really good players there. We had some absolutely unbelievable players. We compete very well. The game finished 1-1. Um, I was the one to get our goal. I got the ball again on the edge of the area and I drove a powerful shot um, along the ground. And it crept in in the, in the near post. Like my contract and everything, I was just sealed. Everything was just sealed for me. Smashing it. Everyone's talking about me. The chairman was like so complimentary of me. The media couldn't get enough of me. I was constantly doing interviews and I haven't even signed, signed a contract yet. A couple of days later, we have another game against Hamburg FC. And I'm like, I watch, I watch this team on TV and here I am, I'm playing against Ham Hamburg Football Club. It's like unbelievable. So anyway, the game, the game start again, like loads of Ghanaians came to watch, it was an unbelievable, amazing game. I think they must have beat us 2-1. I didn't manage to get a goal this time, but I think I played, um, I had a really, really good, good game again. It was such an amazing experience just being out on the pitch with these, with these professional, with these um, superstars. It was just um, an amazing thing. It was, I was so proud to be out there. I was so proud of myself for what I've achieved in such a little time. Antonio Boa at the time he was a Ghanaian legend. He used, to, he used to play for Hamburg as well. So the match was done and it was time. I think we had two more days before we had to fly back out to um, back out to Ghana. After the game, I had a meeting with the coach. He said to me, "When we get back to Ghana, I want to sign you. I want to give you a contract because I think that you're a breath of fresh air. You bring something different to the table. Nothing. You handle yourself really well." To be honest, I had my doubts coming. You scored, scored two goals in three games. I like to keep you. I like I like to sign you. I was so excited. I was like, "Yeah." This is this is unbelievable. This, this, I'm a professional footballer now. I'm a professional footballer. Now. Let's go. Let's. Go. It made me even so so much more happy that we had an um, an English coach there that I could vibe with as well. That I had so much in common with that I can communicate with and had so much time with me. Just showing me so much love. Do you know what I mean? I was grateful for him. I'm so happy that he's offered me a, um, a contract. And when we get back to Ghana, I'm a professional footballer. One thing got one more day before we have to leave Germany. I hear news that the coach has left. The, the coach has. Been, I don't know, I can't remember if he was sacked or left his post or or had a better offer somewhere else or I can't actually remember, I might just have to um, search up on it and see if I can find anything on it but I don't know what happened, all I heard is that the coach is gone, the coach is gone what the hell is going on, what am I going to do now, the coach has left I got along with the coach so well, um, like, I really really liked playing with him I liked his style of play, I liked everything about him, I liked what he stood for, what it was about and now he's gone, so what the hell's happening? I phoned my dad, I told him the good news, I told him that, listen, the coach wants to sign me, he wants to give me a contract, and then he wants to sign me, when I get back to Ghana, I'm going to, I'm going to sign for Asante Kotoko, I'm going to be a professional um, fo football player. My dad was so happy, but I said, but right now, I don't know what to do, because the coach has left, the coach has left, the coach is not um, with the club no more, he's left, he's not here no more, I don't know what happened, I don't know if he's been sacked, I don't know if he's just left, he's had a better offer, I don't know what to do with that, what's going on? And I was like, what do you want to do? I said, I don't know. To be honest, right now, I'm not sure what to do. I was like, do you want to stay, go back to Ghana and stay in Ghana? Or do you want to come back to England? I said, do you know what? I have not, I have nothing to come back to in England and Ghana. If I go there, I don't know what, what's going to happen. And the club don't have a manager. I don't know what's going to happen. It might be a wasted journey. The go back, go back to Ghana, I don't, I don't know what to do. So the, the coach is one of the reasons that I was, I was playing so well and I was happy because he starts me every game player. I don't know what the next coach is going to come in. I don't know what's going to be like. So um, at this time, I don't know that. He said, well, 
we'll have a sleep on it and let me know the next day. So I stepped over it, I was, all night I couldn't even sleep, I was just thinking, I was weighing up, thinking, and I just decided, you know what, I'm gonna come back to England. So I decided to leave Kotoko and come back to England. I didn't end up going back to Ghana, I just straight away went back to London. And I had so much fun with, with Kotoko, I was so, I was so disappointed how, how it ended. So I was really looking forward to going back there and just smashing it in the league and just and just get put my name out there. Do you know what I mean? I thought it was really, really disappointing. I spoke to my friend Tony back in Ghana. He's like everyone's just thinking, where's he gonna what's happened to what's happened to Derek? Newspapers are so making headlines that oh he's been signed by a German team or he's been signed by an English team. But all I did was just go back to London. It was just bitterly so disappointing. My hard work during that time has practically gone gone down the drain. But us in life, you take the positive out of every every bad situation, every negative situation. I mean, I got to play in front of 50, 60,000 people. I got to train in front of 10,000 people. I got to play for my childhood the club, the club that I love so much, the club that made me fall in love with football. It was just like a fairy tale. I, I got to go back and play for them from 18 year old to have that um, experience was unbelievable. As a person from Kumasi, it's such a, an amazing journey. I'm just so proud of myself that that the main, the most important things I proved to myself that these are world class players I was playing with, playing against the German. Because these are world class players I was playing against. I proved to myself that I belong there, so I have the confidence now to take back to England and know that I can mix it with the with, with the best of them at, at the highest level. And that's all I wanted to know that can I compete with these superstars? Can I compete with these players that play for Arsenal, Liverpool? Can I compete with these? You know, what I mean, that filled me with so much confidence that if the chance come along. It will not dunk me. I don't fall down the pressure. I love being, I love playing under pressure. I'm a grinder. I mean, it taught me so much about myself that, you know what? Nothing is impossible. If you had believed that you could play football before, now nothing is impossible. You can go all the way. Just believe in yourself. No doubt, no self-doubt, no nothing. Believe in yourself 100%. So that's what I took away from the um, situation, which I feel built me up, which I feel gave me the confidence to carry on the journey of trying to get a professional contract. Don't ever give up in whatever you want to do. Do not let people um, drown your dreams. Ignore it. Let it bounce off you, work in silence and work hard towards that dream. And I promise you, if you believe in it enough, you will achieve it. I'd like to say a big thank you if you took the time out to listen to my story. I'd like to say a big thank you if you watched any of my previous video. This video is about going back to Ghana. Like it if you enjoyed watching it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel to, to hear more stories about my journey into becoming a professional. You stick around for the next phase in, the, in my journey to, be, to try and become a professional um, footballer. So thanks again for watching and 